of wondered like what can one kilowatt hour actually give you in a practical sense if you're interested in a unit like this well that's kind of what I wanted to explore today in today's video we're checking out the U Green Power Roam portable power station now this goes for $999 but it's on sale in August for $749 so a $250 discount with the coupon code below and if you look around and compare it to similar models of similar sizes you'd realize that that is a really good price I figured this is what we're gonna do today. First of all, let's just check out the unit, you know, the stats, all the information, all of that, and then let's actually use it for a bunch of things. Like, what can you practically use um, this kind of model for? Not too big, not too small, just perfect in between. So first of all, the design. It's rather streamlined, sleek, um, no hard corners anywhere. We have a 10,024 watt hour LiPo 4 battery. So lithium iron phosphate. Um, so in other words, words uh, very safe very efficient battery that you'll get a lot of cycles from in fact you green here they claim that you'll get 3,000 cycles up to 80% or in other words like a 10 year battery life I got 100% here right now it has a 1200 watt inverter 1200 watt is kind of the, uh, the cut off point for for a lot of different appliances um, and we'll check some of those out later now it measures 13.4 times 8.7 times 10.6 inches and it weighs like 25 pounds so <laughs> it's a good it's 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 a very uh, practical weight in terms of taking it in and out of the car moving it around I mean maybe not going hiking with it but you can definitely like take it to places without any issues whatsoever it has this uh, handle on top it's not a sunken in handle but it's a very comfortable handle it came with this little box we have a power cord and interesting point about this power cord there is no brick the brick is inside the unit this is for solar this goes into the unit um, and this is for um, connecting up to two solar panels okay we got a cigarette lighter thing and then we have another DC charging like a barrel plug we have a nice screen 100% it also gives us our input our output like how long it will take to charge it up at that rate how many hours we have to use it at whatever rate we are we're drawing at we have these are for the barrel plugs here charging solar regular charging overcharge protection we have a rather generous amount of plugs. Most units do not have six AC plugs. It can be used as a UPS, so uninterruptible power source if you want to plug in you know, your computer, or you want to protect your hard drives. So in terms of charging, it's fast. So max 1200 watt input. Um, that is like, that's really fast. In fact, they claim that it will go from zero to 80% in like 50 minutes. Uh, which is very fast of course you want to avoid bringing it all the way down to zero percent if you can avoid it not always the case the battery will be in a healthier state if you keep it like you know go down to maybe 20 percent um, but zero to 80 percent in 50 minutes for a, a thousand watt hour battery that is not bad in terms of solar okay so this is where you plug in the solar and it can handle 12 to 48 volts so that's kind of what you need to pay attention to um, if you have a solar panel most solar panels will fit within that range and you can charge up to 400 watts and if you have you know optimal solar coming in it should be able to charge up this unit in four hours now there's an app that you can uh, download and install and if you use the app there's a turbo setting uh, which enables you to like power lift so you can use appliances that drop to 2500 watts uh, so that kind of puts it in a in a different category if you you know use that setting um, the app control also has child lock it monitors charging data and you can set a silent mode apparently it also enables you to charge charge essentials I don't know what is essential like a phone maybe even if the battery is down to zero percent so maybe there's like a little extra battery there, there that it can draw from so I think we have a decent idea of what this unit is now in terms of size and all that but I'm always curious in terms of real world examples like what can you actually use something like this for we have one kilowatt hour uh, what's that actually good for I was kind of curious whether or not this 
could handle the Instapot, uh, which is of course very useful in terms of cooking meals if you have, don't have power. Um, but an Instapot actually uses a fair amount of power, so let's check it out. Okay, let's plug it in. Okay, so we have 100%. So first of all, I want to start with sauteing a little bit. Oil here. Okay, so right away we are using 1100 watts, almost 1200 watts, so we're right at our upper limit. So basically, it tells me here that I could keep doing this for 42 minutes. Now, if you're using the Instapot, um, of course it depends on what you're cooking, right? Um, but 42 minutes is definitely enough to make like a lentil stew, which I am making here, if everything goes right. But maybe not like a big piece of um, pork or like if you want to cook meat for a long time. When it comes to cooking food from battery, you obviously, I mean, you have a couple of different options, right? You can use an uh, electric stove top, use one of these small electric cookers that don't use much power, um, or you can use, you know, an Instapot, slow cooker, that kind of thing. Different options, but they all require slightly different amounts of power, right? Spices. Now, to calculate how much energy we use during these tests, let's make it easy. How many watt hours do each percentage equal? Well, we've got 1024 watt hours divided by 100, so each percent that we use equal about 10.24 watt hours. Obviously, in terms of the state of a battery, percentages are not always linear, but just for the sake of argument, let's assume that each percent we use uses about 10 watt hours of power. We'll do eight minutes on high. It's been on zero for a while, just because it cycles in and out. So we're down to 72%. Final stages of preheating. Now it's bumped up again. So now we're 1100 back again. It tells us here we could do this for 30 more minutes and uh, that shouldn't be a problem. Interesting with the Instapot though, it seems to either be doing 1100 watts or nothing at all. So we are now cooking and the eight minutes have started. And done! So, 51%. All in all, we used 49% or about 490 watt hours to cook this meal. So basically, what does this mean then? That we can cook two of these meals from a full charge or we can cook something that takes longer, right? It passed the Instapot test, which is a pretty, uh, a pretty difficult test to pass, really. Okay, so we got 50% left. Technically, we could keep going, um, but let's charge it back up again. So we are getting a thousand watts coming in. Half an hour later, we are at 100%. Now, whether you have an emergency or whether you're camping, uh, there's one thing that you almost always want to do, sun, and that is boil water. So let's see how much, like how much power does it take to boil one liter of water? I have a kettle. Turn the AC on. 1279, you know, this might be right on the edge. Let's see how long it's gonna take to boil one liter of water. So it's kind of interesting that the inverter, you know, goes up to 1200, so it should cap it at that. But obviously, you know, it can go a little bit above that, 1280. So it tells me here that I could do this for 40 minutes. So how many liters of water could I boil on a full charge here? We have boiling water. So it took us about four and a half minutes. We're down to 88%. Could boil a lot of water. So in total we used 12% of the battery or about 120 watt hours to boil one liter. In other words, we should be able to boil about eight liters of water on one kilowatt hour of power. Another option in terms of cooking, especially if you're only cooking for one or two people and you don't want to use much power, is to use one of these electric lunch boxes. Let's make some biscuits. How many biscuits can you actually make using the U-Green? Um, or of course you can cook other meals in something like this too. You can cook uh, eggs, uh, soups, stews, even pastas I've tried. You can do a lot in something like this, so let's try it out. The way this cooker works, we're gonna pour some water. There's a heating element right in here. Okay, and this is just regular scone, scone dough, biscuit dough. The technique here is this kind of steams your food more than it kind of cooks it. So it, it's a very gentle heat. It's on. Cool. 
Okay, so we're using getting 323 watts. So according here, we should be able to do this for two and a half hours about. Okay, so we uh, usually do about 20 minutes of cooking time using 323 watts. So we're consistently hovering around 300 watts. So the Instapot used about 1200 watts for about half an hour, something like that. Now this is gonna use 300 watts for about 20 minutes. Um, obviously we're gonna get less food. Um, we're still gonna get food though. Okay, so we are down to 76%. So basically, this is how biscuits cooked like this uh, turn out. They are uh, very pale and they're kind of steamed, so they have a very light and fluffy consistency. Um, I think these are done. So we started at 87%, went down to 76%. So we used 11% or about 110 watt hours. Um, that means we should be able to do this nine times. Now each session produces two biscuits, so we should be able to cook 18 biscuits from one kilowatt hour of power using this method. Okay, another important thing, uh, whether you are going camping on there or there's an emergency, is to uh, power up a fridge. Here we have a camping fridge um, that's actually full with <laughs> yogurt and cheese and a bunch of stuff. Uh, so let's see um, how long could you actually power this fridge on um, using the Ugreen. We're starting out at 76% here now. It's tricky with the fridge though, you can't just look at it at one point and draw a conclusion from there because it's gonna go up and down, currently it's drawing three watts. Let's see how much power it uses during an hour. Of course, if you're starting with a warm fridge, um, it's gonna use up a lot more power. So it is uh, a bit dependent on your situation and the outside temperature. Certain fridges draw more than others. So it depends <laughs> on your situation. Okay, we're coming up on an hour at the fridge now. So let's see what we, uh, our percentage is. Okay, we're down to 73%. So from 76 to 73%. So this really didn't use much uh, in one hour time. So what does it really mean? We used 3% or about 30 watt hours in this hour. Divide 1024 by 30 and we have 34. So under these conditions, we should be able to run this camping fridge for about 34 hours although there might be some variation there. If you have a power outage and it's really hot, then a fan uh, can actually be a rather nice thing to, to turn on. So I have a, one of these box fans in the windows here. It's quite effective actually. So let's uh, plug it in. Okay, let's do uh, speed, low speed. 53 watts. Now a fan like this is, you know, consistent. It doesn't go up and down or anything like that. So if you're going at, you know, basically 50 watts, um, you'll be able to use this for what, 20 hours? So uh, almost 24 hours of, of using a fan nonstop. Okay, it's been kind of fun to uh, test out this unit for a bunch of things and overall I would say I really like um, the general size of it. I like the, the physical size of it. I think the battery size is a good size for a lot of different things. Um, and you could totally take this camping and, and, and like cook and charge up your stuff and you know do everything that you need to do for, for a day or two. And of course if you have solar coming in you are on an infinite kind of loop, right? Um, so this is a $999 with $200 off if you use the coupon. So good deal. Um, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Um, uh, yeah, I rather enjoyed this. Thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you soon. Bye.